The fifth special session of Imina Trenta Isiatina de Heslator in Guahan is called to order. This is, session is called pursuant to the Organic Act of Guam, 48 U.S.C., 1423-H, by Imaga Hagen Guahan. However, uh, we are going to recess uh, until we have a quorum. So we are hereby recessed.
is back from recess. It appears we have a quorum now. However, um, I will recognize our acting majority leader, Senator San Augustine. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Notwithstanding the House rules, I move to adopt today's fifth special session agenda dated December 14, 2023. There's a motion to adopt the fifth special session agenda. On that motion, is there any objections? No. Seeing no objection, motion carries. Assistant, uh, or Acting Majority Leader, Senator Sanoxin, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Notwithstanding the House rules, I move to waive special session agendas item two through six. There's a motion to waive the prayer, the recognition of the recipient of Imeladun Mastakilu, the recitation of the Indifrese, the singing of the Guam and national hymns. Is there any objection to that motion? Seeing no objection, motion carries. We're now on roll call. Clerks, please take the roll. Senator Barnett. Senator Blas. No. Senator Brown. Senator Duenius. No. Senator Fisher. No. Senator Lujan. Vice Speaker Munya Barnes. Senator Parkinson. No. Senator Perez. No. Senator Kanata. No. Senator San Augustine. Senator St. Nicholas, Senator Shelton, Senator Tidegui, Speaker Terlahi. Madam Speaker, there is a quorum. Sidus Maasi, Clerk. Acting Majority Leader, Senator St. Augustine, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move to approve the legislative journal dated March 20th, 2023. First special session, March 20th, 2023. Second special session, March 20th, 2023. Third special session and March 2023, fourth special session, subject to corrections. On that motion, colleagues, to approve the legislative journals. These have all been uploaded to the drive by the clerks and completed. This is significant. Uh, is there any objection to this motion to approve these journals? Seeing no objection, motion carries. Acting Majority Leader, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Notwithstanding the House rules, I move to waive special session agenda item number nine. There's a motion to waive special session, special session agenda item nine, which is communications and petitions. Is there any objection? Seeing no objection, motion carries. Acting Majority Leader, you are recognized. Madam Speaker, I would like to advise the members of the, of the message from Imagahaga and Guam spe specific to the call to special session and move that the message from the Imagahaga and Guam be appended to today's special session journal. On that motion, motion that the message from Imagahaga and Guam be appended to the, today's special session journal. Are there any objections? Seeing no objections, motion carries. <laughs> Acting Legislative Secretary, Senator Barnett, will you please read the message from Imaga Hagan Guahan. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and yes, I will. The message from uh, Imaga Hagan Guahan uh, reads, Hafiday Acting Speaker Barnett, uh, it's also dated December 13th, ma'am. The current moratorium on the levy of liquid fuel taxes expires tomorrow, December 14th, 2024. Due to the impending expiration of this moratorium, I am calling on the Guam Legislature to waive the levy of excise taxes automotive surcharges and mass transit automotive surcharges on liquid fuel for the remainder of fiscal year 2024 ending September 30, 2024. I have attached a draft bill for introduction and consideration to provide immediately relief, immediate relief to our residents. This letter is to notify you that pursuant to the authority vested in me by the Organic Act of Guam under 48 USC subsection 1423H, I hereby call a special session of Imina Trentai Sheti Nahiles Latour and Guahan to commence at 1 p.m. on December 14, 2023, at the Speaker Antonio Arampinko Legislative Session Hall in the Guam Congress Building to consider and vote upon the attached legislation. In accordance with 2 GCA subsection 1104, this session shall be designated as the 37th Guam Legislature, 5th special session. Senseramente. Lourdes A. Leon Guerrero, Magahagan Guahan, Governor of Guam.
Sizu Masi, Acting Legislative Secretary Barnett. Acting Majority Leader, Senator San Augustine, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, stand, notwithstanding the House rule, I move to waive special session agenda items 11 and 12. There's a motion to waive items 11 and 12, which are reports of standing committees and reports of select committees. Are there any objection to that motion? Seeing no objection, motion carries. Acting Majority Leader, Senator San Augustine, you are recognized. Madam Speaker, I move that bill, that the bill introduced, bill number not one, five S be deemed to have been given its first reading. On that motion, is there any objection? Seeing no objection, motion carries. We are now in motions. Acting Majority Leader, Senator San Augustine, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I move Sorry. to excuse senators not present for today's legislative session. On the motion to excuse senators not present, is there any objection? Seeing no objection, motion carries. <laughs> Senator Taitigui, you have a motion? Yes, Madam Speaker, I do have a motion. Considering this, this um, legislation that is before us on the special session, I'd like to make a motion that we, we send this back to the committee chair on appropriations to have a public hearing to allow those in the industry to come forward into the legislature to determine whether this pri these levies or these waivers are really actually going to help the people of Guam and to have a public hearing on this bill. So I make a motion that we send this bill to the committee chair to have a public hearing. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On that motion to refer Bill 15-S to the committee on appropriations. Is there any objection? There's an objection. All in favor, please raise your hand. Motion fails. Acting Majority Leader, Senator San Augustine, you are recognized. Madam Speaker, notwithstanding, notwithstanding the House rule, I move to place Bill 15S on, this, on the special session agenda. There's a motion to place. Can you please read the title of the bill, Senator? Bill number 15S, an act to authorize the extension of the Gas Tax Relief Act for the remainder of fiscal year 2024, ending September 30th, 2024. There's a motion to place Bill number 15S on the special session agenda. Is there any objection? Is there any objection? Seeing no objection, motion carries. Are there any other motions under motions? If not, then Assistant Majority Leader San Augustine, you are Th recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Now, notwithstanding the House rule, I move to waive special session agendas item 15 and 16. On the motion to waive items legislative concurrence and consent calendar, is there any objection? Seeing no objection, motion carries. We're now on second reading colleagues and bill number one, five dash S is an act to authorize the extension of the gas tax relief. Uh, this is a fiscal bill. We are going to resolve into the committee of the whole to be chaired by the committee on appropriations. So we are here by, um, in fact, I think we're ready to proceed without, without a recess. So we'll just, uh, we'll take a recess to lower the microphones.
The committee of the whole is called to order. Colleagues, materials for the committee of the whole are in shared session, Google Drive, folder label, committee of the whole bill number one, five S, proposed amendments must be submitted in writing to the clerks via email, session drive at guamlivesagia.org. Amendments not in writing will be called out of order. Rules of engagement. We may have up to three rounds for discussion. We will begin with one round of questions for the panel. With each center allotted five minutes for questions, not including responses. If a second round is needed for questions, we will entertain it. Otherwise, we will dismiss the panel and proceed to the amendment and comments to the bill. Time to speak may not be yielded from more than one member to the other. A member who yields that member's time on a question yields all that member's time on that question and may not later speak, even if all the time you you did was not used. That's on the standing rules section 1.02 D3. Questions shall be confined to the substance or nature of Bill 1, Bill 1, 5S. Personal inference that the character or motive of any senator or any individual testifying is not permitted. Any bodies of the general rule of conduct will be called out of order and may result in the removal from the hall. Proper form and decorum shall be pro practiced by all present. Individuals who fail to maintain proper form and decorum will be restricted from participating and will be escorted from the room. After complete discussion of the bill, I will allow the sponsor, which will be the committee on rules, <laughs> and entertain a motion for the rec recommendation of the committee of the whole, followed by a motion to rise from the committee of the whole, at which time I report out the bill as recommended by the committee of the whole. Thank you. At this time, I'd ask Sergeant Arm to swear in the panel, and I'd ask the panel to please rise. Please raise your right hand. Under penalty of perjury, do you all affirm that any and all information you provide today, whether it be verbally, electronically, and in writing, be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Mr. Chair Dondo, you may proceed. Thank you. I'd ask the panel, beginning from my right, to please introduce yourself, sir, and then we'll move to OFB to introduce themselves. Off today, Jason Baza, Budget and Management Analyst Supervisor, BBMAR. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Guerrero, uh, Director of OFB. Llewellyn Terlahi, Chief Fiscal Analyst of OFB. My colleagues, Bill Number 1-5S. It was introduced by the Committee on the Rules by the request of the Magaagan Guam, the Governor of Guam, in accordance with the Organic Act of Guam, an act to authorize the extension of Gas Tax Relief Act for the remainder of fiscal year 2024, ending September 30, 2024. Colleagues, in your drive, you will find the fiscal note on this bill. I'm hoping that everybody was able to really review this. And with that, I, I we'll begin now the panel of questions with, with Senator Tello then, my vice chair, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and uh, good afternoon to the panel and, of course, to my colleagues. Steve, um, the bill that was presented to us from the governor, um, compare it that to Public Law 105-36, I believe, Public Law 105, how we just adjusted the revenue projections uh, to in incorporate the loss funding that we will receive. Um, it, is that a better way of putting a bill together than having to say excess revenue? If you look at, take a minute to look at Public Law 105 and the way it's formatted. Yes, Senator. Um, if you recall at the time we made the adjustment to, to the budget act, it was actually during the course of the fiscal year. When this appropriation measure was brought up, it was brought up in the sense that um, there would be a, a loss in revenues collected in the government of Guam simply because of the deferment of payment, I mean the waiving of payments for the liquid fuel tax for, I believe, uh, six months. So. I guess the proper way to do it at the time was to go ahead and adjust the Budget Act to reflect the loss of revenues and to basically try to accommodate how we're going to make up for that difference going through the fiscal year. That's why we made the adjustments to the Budget Act. 
unlike this particular bill, this particular bill is being introduced now. And also, if you recall, the latest CER report indicated that the government of Guam right now is basically seeing um, an increase of about $28 million above the directed revenues for, the, for FY24. So that being said, I would safely think it would be okay to go ahead and maybe approach this bill in a different way, the way we did in Public Law 36106, only because we are realizing excess revenues at the moment, which will not jeopardize what we have already budgeted for FY24 for these programs that are being funded from the potential loss of revenues from the Guam Highway Fund because of this um, continuous waiver for the remaining of the fiscal year. Steve, um, if you look at the uh, CRER report, it also indicates they did a, uh, they subtracted from the GPA power credit. And um, now we're sitting at 13 million, uh, not 28, but 13 million. So I assume that BBMR had yet to take the funding out and using the excess revenue to pay for that. Was that the intention of the Guam power um, credit? legislation to use excess revenue from FY23 or 24? The way I'm looking at the CER for the first two months of the fiscal year, in October of FY23, which is the first year of FY24, we did realize an excess of $13 million. Here we are in December, uh, also taking into account the revenues generated in November of FY24, which also generated an additional $15 million to sum to the total $28 million to date. If you look at the CER report, Bureau budget did account for the $13 million for the GPA in October, therefore resulting basically almost in a, one could say in, in a no excess amount at that point. But because we are already in December, taking into account the revenues generated in November of an additional $15 million, that $13 million that you referred to, Senator, has already been accounted for the month of October. So if you take what the CER is showing right now, there is the $15 million excess in FY in for the current year, for the first two months, but it also took into account, I believe, a $3.2 million appropriation that needs to be accounted for from the carryover from last year, which now amounts to around $13 million in excess funds. Steve, um, we're not even finished with the first quarter. Um, do you think that's fiscally, you know, is that, you know, in accounting purposes and, and being, you know, very um, not liberal but conservative to wait at least to the third quarter to really determine what we have in excess. I mean, when, when is the third quarter ending? The third quarter would end roughly in the end of June. So you have July, August, and September for the remaining three months of the fiscal year. What we have done in the last couple of years in terms of the revenues realized by the government of Guam, in particular the legislature, is always taking into account money that has been collected on a monthly basis. And yes, my approach has always been to be a little bit more conservative, hold back. We don't necessarily need to appropriate every penny that we, that we generate above what we project for the fiscal year. And I've always been taking the position that, you know, save it for either a rainy day or just set it aside in a lockbox for unforeseen events that may happen in the, in the future. But I can also say in the last three years that we've been generating, uh, the government of Guam has been realizing excess revenues that the legislature has been appropriating as we go along during the fiscal year to address whatever concerns or urgencies that legislature feels it needs to address in terms of funding. In the but, oh, go ahead. but to your question, I mean, is it prudent to, to put away? Yes, I, I agree. There's, no, there's nothing to say that we need to spend every time we, we collect money. And I think uh, we are only in the second month of the fiscal year. We don't know exactly what could happen in the remaining, gosh, 10 months going forward. Uh, you know, natural disaster could happen, which would put us back, those kind of things. And I'm most definitely, it's, I'm always says, yeah, put it aside. Put some money aside. 
But you know, it's again, it's it's the will of this body, the legislature, to address concerns as it comes up. And uh, I would prefer that you take a more conservative approach and and leave some of this money aside for for those purposes that we are on that are unforeseen at this point in time. Steve, the FY22 audit that was released, um, I was told that uh, a, that excess was actually did not take into account all the appropriations that were made by this body. And so the true excess revenue of around 30 million is really not a reality uh, because it did not in, incorporate that. Now I sent a FOIA request to, or not a FOIA, a request to um, OPA uh, to ask them all the appropriations that have been made uh, using excess revenue for 22, 21, 19, you know, moving forward, that we have those numbers and what has not been paid, paid out yet at this point. So they had mentioned that, have to recall that it, they, it was not taken out in the audit. So that's not a true reflection of the audit. Um, and I'm quite concerned with that because we're going into 23, you know, trying, getting ready for the audit for 23, and we've spent just as much. Here we are, just only two months into the fiscal year, ready to start spending. Steve, can you tell me the funding that, if we don't put this as not excess revenue, but don't put this as just revenue, right? Uh, appropriation revenues what is going to what who's going to lose out in other words because that money is going to be lost seven million is going to be lost from somewhere who's going to lose out if you're talking specifically based on the fund source that's being identified in this particular bill uh, one agency does come to mind which is public works because they are funded out of the guam highway fund and this is where the reduction in revenues are going to occur. But like we did, I, I believe, in 36106, when we went ahead. 105. The second 105. year, yeah, yeah. We appropriated the 5 million to cover the shortfall of the the anticipated fund. loss in revenues. We can take that approach again this year. Um, so increase the revenue projections is what you're saying, right? Not, not necessarily increase the revenue projection. And the reason why I say that today is because we, do, we are realizing excess revenues right now above what we, tr what we projected for FY24. But we still would have to increase the revenue projections. Then that increase would be then put into the, the Guam Highway Fund to subsidize it like Bill 105, I mean, uh, Public Law 105. And then those monies that were appropriated to them in the FY24 budget DBW, who just does not have enough funding, we've seen the potholes, we've seen the lack of them even showing up for public hearings, you know, to give us information about how badly our roads are right now, and for us to take funding away from that, that's what's going to happen, you know, if we don't do something like that to, uh, to increase the uh, projected revenues, and uh, so that they don't lose out. What other agency other than DPW will also lose out? The other agency, um, Senator, that comes to mind is the Guam uh, Regional Transit Authority. Right. Guam Mass Transit. Yes. Yeah. Those, those are the only two that I think would be affected by this proposed bill. This loss. Yes. So w how much did we budget uh, public works for the roads? How much was that? I, give me a second. I can okay. get that in mind. Uh, Senator, for the, uh, the public works, we appropriated about $21 million out of the Guam Highway Fund. How much did they request to fix the roads? Yeah, 
What we specifically budgeted in the budget for repair of roads is approximately 1.5 million. How much? 1.5. No, that's how much, but how much do they need to repair all the roads? That, I'm not mistaken, it was close to $100 million. Well, that, 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 that amount needs to come from public works. Well, I'm only speaking what was in the budget. Yeah. In the if budget. I'm not mistaken, it was 100 million. Real quick question, too. In the, in, uh, the uh, public law 105, section 5 of the bill, can you please read that? I'm sorry, in the public law, section 5 of public law 105-36. This one. Senator, are you referring to Public Law 36105? Yes, sir. Yes, I and am. And you want me to read Section 5 of the bill? Yes, sir. All right. Section 5 reads, every person or business, whether engaged in the wholesale or retail of automotive fuel product products, who are no longer subject to the levy of excise taxes, automobile surcharge, and mass transit automobile surcharge on liquid fuel, shall submit to the Speaker of the Legislature Mohan, and the Director of the Department of Revenue Taxation a written declaration on the per penalty of perjury declaring that such relief or reduction to the levy of taxes and surcharge here, herein were in fact not collected from the consumers and are removed from the final cost of the liquid fuel products for consumers. Such declarations shall be submitted monthly for the duration of the temporary waiver of taxes and surcharge herein. Mr. Chair, I would like to ask our clerk to read off how many reports we received from this body, from all those gas agencies, please. You like the clerk to read it? How many has been received since this gas tax has been in play? How many reports that were required in Section 5 have been received to date? Clerk? Uh, clerk, if you can please uh, advise uh, the body of the number of reports. And the companies. There are seven reports uh, by IPME Holdings LLC, DBA, IPME Guam. Seven reports. So that's only one company who's provided by law where it states they must provide monthly the savings costs and only one company has come forward and only seven, uh, how many months are we in? We're in already the 12th month or 11th month at least. And we've only received seven reports from one company. What makes us think that this levy that we're giving is actually going to the people of Guam? And this is by law, Mr. Chair, by law. 
And these gas companies, that's why I wanted to have a public hearing to bring these gas companies in here to see if we're really getting the savings that was intended for our people. I know my time is up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Fisher, you have any questions? Oh, you have a point of... I, I just wanted to, um, I don't know if it's make a motion, but if we could get the representatives from Big Oil, maybe after this, uh, this panel to come in and uh, answer questions for the body relative to whether or not they're actually providing the savings uh, to our people. Mr. Chair. Okay. Let's just continue. Senator Fisher, and no questions. Senator Carata, no questions. Senator uh, Snickers. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, is it an appropriate time to ask to be a co-sponsor? No. Oh, we, 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 we can add that on the amendment side if that's oh, what okay. you want. Okay. <laughs> uh, any of you under, uh, understand or can tell me how does this materialize at the pump and how does this save our consumers uh, money? Hi, Senator. Um, the current tax is 15 cents for unleaded and um, is it four cents for diesel. So that would save per gallon um, that much cents per gallon. So the uh, the actual savings that we, or the uh, the the relief that the we, or the taxes that are not collected, are shown on the on the pump. Uh, for every cent that the that the big oil uh, would get in some type of relief, it's passed on through the consumer. Is that correct? I'm trying to understand your question. Is, you mentioned it's 15 cents a gallon. Right. So if they if there's if the if the tax is uh, le uh, not levy, uh, 15, 20, 20 cents that gets translated at the pump 20, 20 cents like that? Is that how it works? In theory, yeah. In theory, okay. So um, have we realized that type of gain so far? I mean, has, has anybody uh, had any um, like proof that that's, that's what's been going on? Anybody up there? Or? I, I, I think Senator Snickers. <laughs> Oh, motorists, if you don't see the pump going up in price, then that means the levy is there. Okay. It, and, and, and that's the, normally the sign. Okay. Just yes. to let you know that. And so we've been collecting some excess revenues. That's, that's, uh, that's how we're going to continue this tax relief. Is that correct? Senator, I, I can't. I can't. Pinpoint and safely say that the excess revenue is, is coming from that or is a part of that. The only thing I can say at this point is that whatever saving is being realized by the consumers is being realized by consumers at the pump as they actually pump the, the gas. All this excess revenues that you're seeing is, is it, it's across the board. You have it in income tax, you have it in corporate tax, you have it in withholding. You also have we have, we also have increases in revenues in the uh, gross uh, BBT. So the combined um, increase in, in those categories roughly represent what we've seen today, approximately about $28 million over what we've actually estimated for FY24. How much of that 20, how much that 28 million is attributed to this, ex, uh, to this liquid fuel? I can't safely say, but I'll tell you that it, it, the savings is being realized by the consumers. To the dollar value, we estimated about 2.5 million for FY for the first three three months of this fiscal year. So we can say at least the consumers are realizing some savings in the amount of about 2.3 million dollars in the first three months of FY24. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. You know that's that's what I wanted to hear. I just wanted to make sure that the the savings are being passed through to the through the uh, consumer and I, I support the, the measure and I, I thank the governor for, for uh, you know, doing it uh, such a uh, wonderful time of the year, I guess. <laughs> and uh, one more thing I wanted to ask, you know, while we're at this is uh, if uh, somebody can go down there and pave marine, uh, not pave, but uh, line, you know, paint those lines on Marine Drive, 
you know, if you could just tell the governor I am, can do that for us. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Senator Zingas. Senator Perez, do you have any questions for the panel? Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good, good afternoon to the panel. Uh, yeah, just the questions I guess I want to confirm, you know, is there money available to pay for this? So according to the fiscal note, the cost for the next nine months is $7.8 million. Is that correct? Yes, Senator. We, um, we used the $5.2 million for the 180-day um, time frame and prorated that for nine months. So it's the seven point. Um, 7.8. 7 7 yes, yeah. that's correct. Uh, so this question is for OFB. Um, was this factored into the budget, the 2024 budget? Senator, the only amount that we factored into the FY24 is for the first three months of FY24, which was passed previous before the, before the budget bill was passed. Sorry, you said the first three months? I'm sorry? Did you say you factored only the first three months? Yes. Okay. So this additional nine months is not included in the budget? This proposed bill, what, the, what, it's, what it's requesting is that the savings for the consumer will be extended for the next nine months of the fiscal year. That nine months was not factored into the FY24 budget. Okay. Okay, so the 7.8 million has to be paid for. How, how is the, um, where is the money gonna come from to pay for the 7.8 million? Can you repeat that, Senator, one more time? Yeah, because it's not factored in the budget. So where is the money gonna come from to pay for the, this tax relief? Yeah, any, any loss in revenues as a result of the proposed bill, which we believe right now is approximately about 7 point, maybe 7.9 million for the remaining, 7.5, 7.6 for the remaining fiscal nine months. Um, a couple of things can happen. One is that we are realizing an excess um, collection in revenues for the fiscal year. To date, for the first three months, it's approximately 28 million. If this trend continues to the end of the fiscal year, which is almost the same um, rate of expenditure uh, of collections we had last year, I would think it would be safe to say that the excess revenue would be sufficient to cover any shortfall realized as a result of this bill. And then we can identify those excess monies to be appropriated to cover the, re the loss in revenues that we anticipated in the FY24 budget to both public works and mass transit. Should that be included in this bill then? Because you know, if we're gonna pass this bill, we should also offset the loss that's going to DPW, you know, we're experiencing you know, problems with our roads. Um, so isn't that something that we can do? Senator Paris, what you're mentioning is something we do on the third round, the amendment section, and there are amendments being prepared in reference to exactly what you're saying. Okay, so um, thank you. Uh, also, I want to ask, so I know my colleague was asking a, a lot of in-depth questions about um, some of the excess revenue has already been um, accounted for, or pay, uh, we've, we've uh, appropriated it for other uh, projects. Um, so in this 28 million that is uh, in excess, according to the latest CRR, um, does that include the latest round of uh, GPA uh, credits? So have we deducted that already from the 28 million excess? The only appropriation center that I, that I am aware of right now that is being assessed and charged to the FY24 excess revenues is the GPA, I believe, fourth or fifth round credit. Confirming that it's the round four of GPA credits that's being charged to the 24 surplus. Okay, sorry. Can you repeat that? So you're saying that it's already accounted for? We have to deduct it from the current 20? So out of the 28.9... 15.8 uh, is netted out 
to arrive at the 13 million in um, page three of the CRER, where it says net unobligated projected general fund revenue. Okay, and so 13 million is excess. What about the uh, shortfall in special funds? Uh, sorry, this is AOFB or yeah, BBMR, if you can chime in. What is the current short, shortfall in special funds? Okay, Senator, right now if you look at the special revenue uh, funds for the first two months of fiscal year, of the six major categories, I believe uh, two or three of them are, are running a little short under, under, not performing up to par. With the exception of the, I believe the, the Healthy Future Fund, which is about 2.3 million behind already. The other funds, I believe, like uh, yeah, the Guam Highway Fund, and, uh, yeah, which is showing about 806 million. I mean, six, 806,000 below. The only thing I can say is we're only two months into the fiscal year, and, and these projections are done for 12 month period. Some months are high, some months are low, it just depends, but when you even it out, we hope by the end of the fiscal year, we would hit the mark of that revenue projection, projection that we have uh, indicated in, in the law. So I'm at this point not too worried about those negatives, aside from the healthy future fund, which is trading about 2.3 million, and that uh, I would like to think maybe about six months down the road, maybe half the year, three quarters of the year. I hope that these funds will kind of like generate sufficient funds to meet up to the level that we've actually projected. I can safely say the Healthy Future Fund is something that we need to look at and it's something we may want to consider right now to maybe address on how to, to fund the agencies that are being funded from this um, particular fund simply because this is a large amount of funds. But as far as covering it, I, I think with what we're tracking now in terms of excess revenues in the general fund, I think it'd be more sufficient to, to cover these shortfalls in the special funds. Okay, just to reiterate, you're saying that uh, Healthy Futures Fund is short by three million for this first quarter? Right now it's 3.59, I mean, tr yeah, 3.5 million short for the first two not quarter, first two months of the fiscal year. Wow. So that's, yeah so, yeah, so that's why I'm saying that maybe that's something that we need to put a special attention to and monitor the tracking of this. But I believe... You're raising fee, right? You're, you're raising bills. You're raising bills. So again, Senator, it's, it's a matter of, I think we just, um, I think the Bureau budget and also our office will probably be monitoring this particular special fund to make sure exactly it doesn't go on the wayside to a point where it becomes very, it becomes um, more of a, a hindrance to the agencies that the fund is actually funding and we will need to address it sooner maybe than later. Okay, so if we were to just extrapolate Three, about let's say three million for every two months, right? So we're, if we multiply that by six, then we're going over the excess amount that's left. So there isn't enough money based on just the Healthy Futures Funds alone. Uh, if you're looking at the other funds, so Healthy Futures Funds is just a portion of the special funds. And who's to say that the three million may not, may actually go up as far as um, shortage, right? We don't know if it's gonna be three million every two months or four million the next two months, you know? So um, judging just by those simple calculation, there doesn't seem to be enough money from what I can tell, unless you have other information as far as other sources of money. Is there some pot of money that we are not accounting for at this time? When it comes to special funds, Senator, special funds are specific. Uh, all funds generated by the funds go directly into that particular fund. It is not commingled. So whatever the, the, the revenues are being collected within each specific uh, funds, those revenues, again, are dedicated to that particular fund. You are correct. Um, you know, 
3.5 million is a large amount of money to say at least for the first two months um, we're not collecting. I, I would say based on the trend, even last year's performance of the fund, it is something that we have to look at and probably consider how we're going to maybe augment the fund uh, with maybe other funds, more specifically the general fund. But I, I, I can say that at the rate we're going, the trend that we're going with this particular fund, the increase will, will get bigger. How much more, I don't know, but hopefully we can get a handle on it and make some adjustments as we go forward in the fiscal year. Yeah, just the, you know, the Healthy Futures Fund funds the hospital, right? A big portion of that goes to the hospital. It goes to the Department of Public Health, Guam Behavioral Health, Cancer Care. So if we're going to take money away from that, you know, that's going to impact those agencies and the community that's relying on those agencies. So that is something um, that is uh, worrisome. Uh, another question in regards to, you know, the language here, it says all levy of excise taxes. Does this include uh, aviation fuel? Because I remember in the very first bill, we were very uh, targeted about which fuel we, we were uh, lifting the excise tax. My understanding, Senator, is this liquid fuel tax excludes the aviation liquid fuel tax. It does not include it. Those taxes are, se are um, they have a separate rate for that. So this question is for BBMR. Um, so in the language here, does it look to you like we're excluding aviation fuel because it says all levy of excise taxes, automotive surcharges, mass transit automotive surcharges on liquid, liquid fuel. So I know there is a breakdown of the liquid fuels tax, not just to automotive, but also aviation, um, is, is this language sufficient to um, retain that, uh, that we're not lifting it, or sorry, that we're, yeah, it doesn't include the aviation fuel. Um, let me just take a look at the previous legislations to see if it mirrors the same, but, um, I do note that some of the previous legislations listed out uh, specifically. Um, however, public law, sorry, public law number 36124 has the same language, it looks like. That was an extension of the one prior to that, so. So if, and I there believe was, this a, one would be a further bill. extension and I think it would exclude the commercial aviation fuel tax as well. Okay. Maybe perhaps the language could be improved because to, to me it doesn't, yeah, we have to go back to that initial bill. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Senator Brown, do you have any questions? A point of information, Mr. Chair. Yes, the, the law that was passed says Except for liquid fuel used for commercial aviation purposes, the levy of excise taxes on liquid fuels, blah, 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 shall be waived. So it was an express statutory exception for aviation. Yes, thank you. Senator Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. Herman. I just wanted to ask again, what is the amount we otherwise would, um, the government would have received over this fiscal year if, if the... Um, gas tax were to be put back in place. What are we looking at? I've heard like about four million. Is that, is, is that Steve about the amount? What are we, what are we looking at? Which, either you or um, BBMR, or Mr. Baza. In um, historical years without the tax levy, we averaged out about nine to 10 million in liquid fuel taxes. Well, that's but a, okay. this information was prior to COVID as well, so. Um, are we buying less gas these days? Perhaps I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm I there every every that. few yeah. days, so I don't. Yeah. I don't know about everyone else, but I mean that's a big departure from what publicly has been stated that we're looking at maybe four to four point five million dollars. So 
You know, I, I, this is the strangest time in my legislative life of dealing with finances because, you know, uh, we hear one thing from the administration and something else happens. And I don't have a lot of confidence these days, unfortunately, in the information being provided. So I don't even know why I'm asking questions, but I guess for my own peace of mind, maybe I think I need to. But uh, Senator, if I can clarify I, that. I just want to know that we're getting accurate figures because we were told there was, there was no money and then there's money. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't understand this kind of accounting. So it's not a reflection of you, Mr. Raz. You were not here. Um, um, yeah, Senator, if I can clarify, the 9 to 10 mil, that's for a full year. Full okay. Year, yeah, full year. And so is that the standard over the last, is that kind of how it levels out on an annual basis for the last few years, or um, just minus COVID, just on average, or you, you can't go back that far? It was about the same. And then there was, a, I forget which year, the tax levy was increased from 11 to 15. Um, in a, it obviously, it was a little less at that point in time. So from the years that the tax levy was increased to the 15 cents, it's been about 9 to 10 so, uh, prior to the waiver. I don't know if you're in a position to answer this, but with regards to the uh, impact, I mean, we understand that the, uh, with regards to the special funds, we've seen this trend for the last few years um, that we're not doing the, the same level of, of collection with regards to those funds. But um, I don't know who on the panel can ask, are we going to be, we feel comfortable we're going to be able to make up this difference in this, this part of the fiscal year? Because I'll tell you, um, I'm hearing a lot of complaints about the roadways. We sort of not quite had a public oversight yesterday on DPW that didn't show up for the hearing uh, to give us some updates and give the public updates with regards to road projects and road maintenance. But I think anyone and everyone who drives on the roadway can see quite clearly the lack of adequate, consistent maintenance throughout the island. You know, we are very good at the use of federal funds in constructing new roads, uh, very poor with regards to maintenance. I think we're getting to the point, I don't know about you, but when I'm out there at night, uh, especially now this time of year, I almost can't see and distinguish between one lane to the other. And then when you have heavy rain on top of that, that creates another safety factor. So, I mean, I can understand the need to, to want to do this. I mean, I'm almost wanting to, to do an amendment to, why don't we just eliminate it rather than coming back here every few months and politicizing this process of, uh, oh, let's, let's, let's you know, suspend it for the next few months and then we'll do it again. And it'll be another colleague tripping over the other colleague to make sure they're the ones that get credit for it. So I don't have a problem with doing it, but you know, it's almost like, why don't we just get rid of it if it's so unimportant? Because I, I agree with, uh, you know, Senator Tello. I, I think we're finding, even if we, and we have removed this uh, gas tax, it, it's not really affecting, uh, you know, the prices, the radical changes that the gas companies unilaterally overnight change in terms of increases, decreases, increase, decrease, increase, increase, increase. Um, and, and how they come to that calculation, how all the, the different gas companies on Guam seem to manage to change their prices identically over and over and over again. I know this issue has been raised, but it's not as clear cut as we'd like to tell our people that this is really major relief for them. Even though, like I said, I probably will vote for this bill, but I, it, this is just not as clean as I'd like to see it because I think there's critical, critical services we're not providing on our roadways. And I think that's very visible and I think that's very evident to the people in our community. And so, while I know the majority of this money is dedicated to, to, to road maintenance, uh, the amount we're putting, it was mentioned a little earlier in this, this fiscal year, and I just want to cl clarify this with Steve, is that, is that the amount, 1.5 million? Is that really all we've dedicated for road maintenance this fiscal year, or do you know? Senator, the amount that we appropriate in FY24 is the amount that the department requested for the road payment. So that's what we appropriated the 1.5 for. Whether or not it's been consistent in the past few years, I don't know. Bear in mind, when we appropriate to the departments, we appropriate in lump sum. Sure. So how much of the 1.5 they're spending? Maybe they might be spending more for road. I'm, I'm pretty sure they're spending more for road payment road improvement you can see it out there I mean everywhere I go I see road improvements and that's more than 1.5 million well then that the good question is where's the money I mean I understand the routed roads are federally funded but the local 1.5 million in terms of road paving and road maintenance is nothing it's absolutely nothing and I know having served as a director of DPW this is nothing 
So if, if we're looking at, at local funds actually being used to address any, I mean, if we're going again, I, this is the strangest time, like I said, uh, I, I don't know what tr what's being truthful now. And, and, you know, I assume numbers are really, I'm not an accountant, but, you know, I can balance my checkbook. It, it's, I don't know what kind of funky accounting's going on these days because I, I, I you know, flatly have very little confidence right now in, in BBMRs public position that they've taken before this legislature under oath that, you know, we've got money or we don't have money. The last we heard, we don't have money. Uh, and that impacted the decision of some of us on how we voted. And then the, the governor did something else. So I'll just wait for the next round, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the opportunity to question and comment. Thank you, Senator Brown. Madam Speaker, do you have any questions for the panel? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, Yes, I, I wanted to note, uh, like my colleague did early previously, that the bill that's being proposed by the governor, I think, would go um, and relieve aviation fuel from being taxed. And that is a significant amount that we are actually counting uh, in our current highway funds. And uh, I think that has not been anticipated at all. So that's not something that we did in the past, so I'm not, I don't necessarily support doing that now, like giving an exemption for aviation fuel. Um, I think we're trying by this bill and previous bills to really impact the consumers and, and those who are working hard need gas to get to work, and we want to give them a break on gas prices. And we relied very much on the representations by these gas companies that they were going to report and they were um, cooperative at the time that they would fully report and that they would pass that savings on. Uh, so of, of course I share the concerns of uh, my colleague from Tamuning that uh, without those gas companies reporting, I think that's a very serious matter, Mr. Chair, that we need to maybe pause and, and see what we're going to do about that. But um, this is, again, maybe I'm going to say on top of other past issues that we have had with these gas companies, and we cannot seem to break this uh, lack of transparency, and we need transparency, I think, because, you know, while they claim the gas prices are beyond their control, it's hard to believe that if we can't get any transparency at all. So they know that, they know that's the sentiment of the consumers, they know that that's been a government challenge all these years, and so we thought we would, that we're acting in good faith to extend this credit, which is really something that, um, you know, we have relied on the gas companies to report on. Um, so the bill in its current format, I, I do not support, I, I, but I do support, of course, it, I, you know, some of you weren't here in the 36, but in the 36, this was a bill I introduced in February 2022. To actually, I, did, I introduced two bills. One was to repeal the four cent increase that had been passed in previous legislatures. And the second one, Bill 261, was to repeal the entire liquid fuels tax for automotive, the automotive surcharge. And um, because of the excess revenues that we had received for th like three fiscal years straight, and uh, that we instead use general funds to pay what those liquid fuels tax had paid back then. That was, of course, GRTA, a little bit for pu uh, public works, a little bit for the mayors, and a little bit for uh, GPD. And it was very clear that we could cover that with general fund revenues. There, there has been inconsistent, I have to say, answers by BBMR over the years. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Baza, I'm not referring to you, but just by BBMR over the years. For example, on Bill 261, the testimony was this, would, it was written to repeal the tax as if what the governor wants to do for the rest of the fiscal year. And they sent the entire troops down to tell us the mayors would be impacted, DPW would be impacted, 
everybody would be impacted as opposed to just using the excess tax to cover them, the excess revenue. So I, I'm just glad that we can all recognize now, after such a long debate, that of course we should use our revenue, excess revenues to take care of these consumers. They're the ones I want to prioritize. And we can do that without harming DPW if we can rely on what BBMR is telling us. So if I could just ask BBMR, your estimate for FY21 is, I mean, sorry, that your estimate of the impact of the governor's bill is based on a $10 million estimate of liquid fuels, or sorry, nine to $10 million uh, average revenue for liquid fuels tax. It's uh, prorated for nine months. One, one minute. Senator Burnett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I want to yield my time to the speaker. Susan All right. Fossey. Thank you, because it just, and it can, please continue, Speaker. Mr. Bowser, go ahead. Um, yes, the, the $7.8 in our fiscal note is prorated for nine months because the Budget Act did account for the three months of the beginning of the fiscal year in the revenue projection already. Okay. And... Um, you're using an estimate that was done several years ago. Is that, should we still be doing that? It's the best data we have, especially with um, the waiver of the liquid fuel tax over the last few years. So there's nothing current to utilize at the moment right now. Okay, the reports should have been able to tell us, right? If the, the, if the fuel companies had been reporting, then we should be able to know exactly how, many, how much gas they've been selling and maybe make a bit more accurate. But because they haven't been reporting, our estimates are going to be off. If I could ask OFB, when we passed the budget for FY24, what did you use as the estimate of included in our anticipated revenue for liquid fuels tax for the seven months? Can you repeat the first part of your question? I got the last part. I didn't, I didn't get the first part of your question. Um, I'm sorry. What is the estimate that we relied on, or that we appropriated in the budget? We anticipated liquid fuels tax. How much did we anticipate for, this, for the seven months? Give me one second, Senator. Senator, to answer your question, if I, and if I heard your question correctly, you wanted to know what the impact was on the highway funds collection for the summer months of the fiscal year. That, that amounted to about $2.6 million for June, July, and August. I'm not following. We, you, when we did the budget, you estimated that we would receive liquid fuels tax. Yes, for yeah. the whole year, for the whole year. Correct. How yes. much? How much liquid fuels tax for the, for the year would be seven months, right? Because we already had an ongoing exception up to December. Or how many months? Okay, Senator, the, for the first three months, we estimated 2.6 million for the first three months of FY24. So the remaining months of FY24, we estimated about 7.7 7 .7 million. Is that based on different d data than what BBMR is No, B BBMR is saying their estimate is anywhere from 9 to 10 million. We're almost 7 plus 7, 6, but at the 2.5 is around 9.5 million. So okay. we're roughly the same with them. A few hundred thousand off, but projection-wise, okay. we're the same. All right, because I just want to make sure that the impact then of the bill in your estimates would be the same, that we would be, uh, the, the bill would take away from what we had projected in revenue, uh, this $7 million, mm -hmm. and 
that we can cover that if we can rely on BBMR's report in the CRER that we have uh, 13.087742, right? That's what we have left even after the energy credit bill was funded, right? The GPA. Correct. Thank you. And then, um, but BBMR's fiscal note, Did you read the fiscal note, the, the last paragraph? Is this regarding the computing measure? Yes. Let me pull it up real quick, sorry. So the last paragraph on the fiscal note, the bureau notes that there is another proposed legislative measure, Bill 20837, that seeks to utilize FY24 general fund revenues collected in excess of the adopted revenue levels in Public Law 3742 to cover the cost of a three-month extension of the energy credit program. The net unobligated projected general fund revenue for FY24 will be insufficient to cover both proposed legislations at this time. This is just to state that should the bill that we're talking about today pass, uh, the balance of that general fund, unobligated balance per the November CRER wouldn't be enough to cover both at the same time. All right, so we have to choose today, if we believe these reports, to fund either this uh, liquid fuels tax relief for the rest of the fiscal year or the energy credit relief uh, that the, for three more months, right? Or, or do less in either or scenario. However, um, we were told it previously that the energy credit could not be funded by ARP, that the, the GPA credit could not be funded by ARP. Can the liquid fuels tax relief uh, be funded by ARP? Unfortunately, no. The final rule says that um, I have the, the excerpt here. Ineligible uses of the ARP statute um, for states, territories, or states and territories, the offset provision prohibits the use of ARP funds to directly or indirectly offset a reduction in net tax revenue resulting from a change in law, regulation, or administrative interpretation. Okay. When we had a hearing before, they had said there was a numerical amount to that, like if the taxes were offset by more than $7 million or something but there's no limit you're saying cannot be used. Yeah, it's, it's, the, first, um, it's the first item on ineligible uses All of right. ARP. So BBMR says in its note that uh, we have 13 million available. There's only 7 million that we need to, to relieve the people of this liquid fuels tax. Um, Sorry, Mr. Chair, could I just have a one minute or one minute recess? Can we just take a, we're going to take a short one minute. Thank you.
We're back from a short recess. Uh, speaker, you still have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. So the governor's bill says that the taxes shall be waived for the remainder of the fiscal year. It doesn't say what money, such as the excess general fund revenues, shall be used to make up for that. Uh, I think it's implied, and I have no problem with that. But in previous measures, for example, ones that I've introduced, we had BBMR and DOA and everybody in here telling us that's not possible. We could not do that. But um, I know that we can prioritize the money where we want. Was the shortfall in the Healthy Futures Fund covered in fiscal year 2023? Was there a shortfall and was it covered by the general fund? I would have to defer to DOA on that because that's a combination of the revenues being short and then whatever expenditures against their appropriations. Um, the revenues were short per the special fund report, but I don't have um, a report on all the Healthy Futures Fund expenditures at this time to confirm if expenditures for, uh, like exceeded revenues okay. to a certain extent. And there was some concern brought up earlier that we have a shortfall in the Healthy Futures Fund right now. And uh, is that being covered? Are, are, are agencies being asked not to spend what was previously appropriated? At this time, we haven't issued any circular regarding that. Um, there are times on the special fund reports, though, that DOA would transmit to us um, updated prior month information. Sometimes it's delayed posting. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just lagging. Uh, you can see that a lot with the solid waste fund. There's usually half of it is being reported in the current period. And then the next month's report will show the lagged um, data posting. Thank you. Uh, the last time we were in here, BBMR reported that we had received, or DOA had reported, that we had received Medicaid reimbursement, in 60, uh, like $16 million, and that they had put that towards the typhoon. Um, relief funds uh, and that we were anticipating another like 17 million in Medicaid reimbursement. Did we receive that? I'm not personally aware of, of that one. All right. Uh, there was also previous legislation that appropriated $30 million for GMH on top of GMH's regular appropriation. Can any of you tell us the funding source for that $30 million? 2023 surplus revenues. And on the CRER for November, you'll note on page eight, it's uh, reflected near the bottom of the page. The 30 million is there. 21.2 has been expended as of November 30. Say that again, what, 21.2? 21.2 million of that 30 million has been expended to pay down the vendor payables as of November 30. Is there any FY23 unexpended uh, revenues? Per my count right now, if I was to factor in the special fund shortfalls, right now there's, there's nothing. Um, but that's still subject to the reconciliation on DOA's end between revenues short and expenditures against the appropriations. Has any of the rainy day fund been used for typhoon repair? To my recollection, no. How much in typhoon repairs has been made since the last report? Or expended? I'm not too sure about that information, but I can get back to you on that. All right. If we could just get that in writing, I'd appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Were there any reserves left at the end of FY23 where we had asked agencies to not spend? 
if there were reserves, the department didn't request to release it, but our normal practice is to release reserves at the end of the fiscal year to cover all their expenses. So can you tell us whether they were released? I, I don't have the report on me right now, but um, for the most part, from what I know, uh, I would say majority, yes. All right, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Very welcome speaker. Um, Senator Parkinson, you're next. Thank you. Um, to uh, OFB, how many consecutive years based on GovGuam wide audit have we delivered revenue uh, in excess of expenditures? So uh, I, we see in FY20, starting FY2021, and then the audit just got released for FY2022. So in FY2021, although we had an um, operating surplus of $31.9 uh, million, we had a, a beginning deficit of $1.5 million, which gave us the $30.3 uh, million. And then for 2022, well, the operating deficit for uh, surplus for 2022 was 105 million, plus the beginning um, balance of 30.3 million was, um, we have a fund balance of 135 million. So these are the only two fiscal, uh, those fiscal years are. Okay, so we've had several years of consecutive surpluses. Yes. And uh, when we look at revenues in excess of what was budgeted before adding spending, we delivered something in 100, 105 million in surplus. Is, do I have that correct? Yes, for 2022. And uh, what is the tax per gallon if this bill fails to pass? Um, the taxes are 11. Um, it's, there's a 14, uh, 14 cents per gallon for the liquid fuel tax for Diesel, 15 uh, cents per gallon for all other fuel, and a 4, sur uh, 4 cent uh, per gallon surcharge that is affected by this bill. So, uh, so about 14 cents a gallon, is that what I heard? For the diesel. For the diesel? And 15 for all other. And 15 for all. So 15 cents a gallon per regular gas. Yes. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure I got the scrapes we've had. Um, multiple years of surpluses and our last, our most recent audit included a hundred and five million in excess revenue before we spent it in 2022 and if we vote no on this the prices for gas could potentially go up 14 to 15 cents before Christmas time. Yes. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Thank, thank you for the questions. Uh, I think that was, uh, I think that's what I needed to hear. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Park, uh, Senator Parkinson. Uh, Senator Duenas. See, just my seat. Um, so Steve, the way that the funds have been tracking and as I read through the fiscal note, are you confident that if we continue to track the way we are, that we would be able to realize this revenue? If you're referring to the seven million that we need to pass this bill, yes, Senator, I am. Bibi Amar, do you feel the same? Yes. So, Steve, once again, um, what we're doing here is um, essentially dealing with excess revenues as recognized, which means you wouldn't need to adjust the budget at this point. You may want to appropriate, and I think there is a, 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 an amendment pending for that. But because we're anticipating the excess, that means the current budget adopted levels are still intact, correct? Yeah, that's correct, Senator. So I just wanted to make sure that, and that's why I asked the first question was, um, you know, I, I would think that we, we adjust 
revenues uh, for appropriation, which it looks like it's pending. And then we adjust revenues uh, if we had to go down because we weren't going to anticipate. But right now, the fiscal note is, is, uh, is anticipating a funding source of excess revenues. So we're not, we're not taking anything away right now that we've actually appropriated. That's correct, Senator. Okay. In your time, um, Steve, that you've been involved with BBMR and interacted with the fiscal team, uh, revenue and taxation, um, all of the other uh, department administration and how you work uh, under, B under BBMR and under OFB to track revenue. Um, it's pretty much a sure thing when a tax exists that it's going to be collected, correct? What I can say, Senator, is every year when we sit down and we basically project and estimate what the revenues of the government of Guam will be, we take into account everything that we know currently and what we anticipate to happen in the future. Oh, I would safely say over the last four years, we've done a pretty decent job simply because we were conservative as we, as we budget going forward. And over the last three years, we actually have realized excess revenues, which allows this government to utilize those revenues for other emergency current or other basically projects and things that, that weren't known at the time we were preparing the budget. So it gives the flexibility to the legislature to address those concerns as we go forward. Um, the last three years have been pretty healthy for the government of Guam. As, as you know, we've collected, gosh, almost about $200 million in what we anticipate e each fiscal year. So going into FY24, looking at the current trend that we're, we, we see for the first two months, collecting $28 million. And like you said, if we continue at this rate, at this trend, they, they, I would safely say there is going to be a significant amount of excess revenues to be realized again in FY24, despite increasing the budget in FY24 by almost $100 million over FY23. So while I really am going to be interested and in anticipate looking at the reports from the fuel stations, um, we know that their declaration when this bill uh, when this public law was passed prior was that most assuredly um, they would pass along the savings because they would not be collecting that tax so they would not add it. So we'll, we're going to have to hold um, their feet to the fire with regard to the reports. But after you've basically made the statement that you, you know that there is strict collection of taxes, I think you could probably join me in safely saying if we don't pass this bill, and as the governor's called us in with the letter that this expires tomorrow, it would almost be a foregone conclusion that the tax being implemented will increase the price of the pump, correct? Um, you, can, you can say that, Senator. Um, again, like I said, when you talk about price increases at the pump, all it is is just, maybe it's, to me, I, I call it a deferment. For, for these the petroleum company agencies because what we what we did over the last one year was we just kind of like rolled back what the consumer would have paid at the pump, 15 cents a gallon, 4 cents a gallon for the surcharge. Now if this measure doesn't go through, all it is is the consumer is going to be paying 19 cents more at the pump. That's what it's saying. Of course, it's going to generate additional revenue from the government of Guam, which at this point, to be realistic, the government of Guam don't need that extra 19 cents a gallon, simply because we are collecting in excess of what we anticipated. So if there's any savings to be realized, let it be in the pockets of the consumers. The governments don't need to realize that savings right now because we are enjoying the excess. And you're right. I mean, it is going to increase the revenues of Gov Guam. I'm just saying the whole intent of this bill is to save the consumers some money. And if it doesn't go through, and I'm not advocating that the bill is great. I'm just saying the intent of the bill seems reasonable and plausible at this point in time. Steve, much like the power credit, uh, just putting on your BBMR hat again and then also, you know, managing government revenues over the year and seeing other ways that other administrations have, you know, found ways to rebate tax dollars to the people. 
tax revenue, and this is an excise tax. I'm, I'm a very strong advocate of tax reductions, <laughs> and that's what this looks like to me. Do you, would you, in your professional opinion, consider this like a rebate to the consumers of overpaid taxation since we're using excess revenue as the funding source? And everybody, I, I don't know anybody on the island except for a, a person who doesn't have a driver's license that doesn't buy gas. I, I, w I would say um, I, I won't really necessarily call it a rebate because it's not something you're paying out. You're not something you're not getting, getting reimbursed. All of this is basically it's just a savings. It's a savings from you from paying 19 cents more at the pump. That's all it is. And it's in other words, it's 19 cents I can redirect to pay something else, you know, and what I, I need to get personally as a consumer. But a rebate, um, I don't think it's a rebate because I, I never paid it up front. I'm not obligated to pay it. If I buy gas, I buy gas. And like you said, if I have a license, more likely I'm going to buy gas because I'm driving a car. So, we can split yeah. hairs, but the bottom line is we, we, we'd be giving somebody, a, we're giving a, a, a person who buys gas a savings. Absolutely. You're correct. That's the only questions I have. Thank you. A minority leader, Senator Bloss, you recognize. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, to the panel, thank you very much. Um, I guess I'm just trying to sit here, and, and, and Mr. Bazza, you said that the who rated or the, the amount here, $7,823,700. That was like a prorated amount yeah. based on? Prorated for nine months. For nine, nine months, okay. How did we get to that? Okay, so prorated for nine months, what, what was your usual 12 month figure? Uh, to arrive at that 7.8, we used the previous public laws. The appropriation of 5.2 was for a six month period. So we prorated that for a nine month period to come up with the estimate of 7.8. Oh, so that was based on an appropriation amount, not so much a collected amount. Because uh, right now, it's tough to come up with current uh, liquid fuel tax projections when we've had a long period of time without um, collections of liquid fuel tax. So we went with the appropriated amount for a, a safe bet, seeing that it somewhat leveled out in FY23 the amount that was appropriated to the Guam Highway Fund to cover the shortfall. So we felt it was a safe bet to use that number for a six month period and we prorated it for a nine month period. Okay. Um, based on assumption, let's, let's go on assumptions here. When was the last time, or not the assumption, when was the last time you were able, BBMR was able to come up with the exact few figure the amount of what was collected in liquid fuels tax? I believe actuals was probably, um, one second. Actuals was mid-22, FY22. And that accounted by the but for that one, we were able to extract that it's about nine to ten million in just the liquid fuel tax surcharge, not including aviation fuel tax or driver's license fees or anything like that, just for the liquid fuel tax. And how long for for, for what length of period, length of time? A full year. That's a full year. A full year. What this is asking for is not just the liquid fuel tax, but also for um, the surcharge? Yeah, I believe it's an extension of the fuel tax and then as well as the four cent surcharge. So based on the conversations, this is 15 cents per gallon liquid fuel tax. Four cents per gallon 
surcharge? Correct. So that's 19 cents? Correct. And this figure was based on both those figures? Or was just on the? Yeah, our, our um, estimate of the actuals of 9 to 10 includes both the liquid fuel tax and the surcharges. And then the 5.2 was the uh, appropriations to allow for the, the waiver to happen. And we noticed that in the last fiscal year, it was a safe number to use because it's, it almost netted out uh, even um, with the Guam Highway Fund. So that's why we use that as the base to prorate for a nine month period. Okay. Mr. Guerrero, how much did, based on, we recognized in the budget that the moratorium on, on the fuel charges was going to expire in December, right? So we went ahead and we looked at what we anticipated that we were going to get in fuel tax and surcharge in the 2024 budget. What number, what figure was that? So the, the, the remaining nine months, Senator, for FY24, we project roughly about 7.7 .7 mil. 7.7 mil? Yes. Okay, and the reason why I'm asking a lot of these questions is I'm trying to figure out what... I understand the conversation and recognizing that we are confident that in what we are going to receive in excess of what we had already appropriated, we'll be able to cover the amounts necessary for this. But has that taken into account the monies that still, we've got LEAP that hasn't been appropriated or has, hasn't been paid up. We've got, um, what do you call it, merit bonuses that haven't been paid up. We, 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 by, by the way, Mr. Baza, the public law, the, okay, the, the budget law says that you have to pay the merit bonuses out by December 31st of this year. Where are we with that? We're actually seeing um, the GG1s for those merit bonuses starting to trickle in right now. Okay, and we have enough to be able to cover that? When the department submits it, we ask them for their entire cost estimate and then we'll run our projection on there. Because it has to be paid out of their 2024 budget, we want to make sure that they're able to operate but also be able to cover their merit bonuses at the same time. And this is for merit bonus according to the law from Correct. 2010, from as far back as 2010? Correct. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm just, I'm recognizing looking at the government, and I'm, I think there was the confusion is that I was anticipating off of, I guess, the amended version to the little, to, to the legislation. But Mr. Baza, based on the governor's uh, bill that was submitted, it does not provide an amount that we are, we're going to, we're going to be waived that's going to be waived. What exactly is that? was that amount that was anticipated based on the governor's bill? The amount um, anticipated on our end is the 7.8. Um, and you're correct, there wasn't an amount on the bill itself. Okay, why don't I wait and 
because I won't have enough time to ask the next question until the second round. So thank you very much, Madam Chair. You're very welcome, uh, Minority Leader Senator Blas. Senator Snogestein, Chairman, do you have any questions? Um, Madam Chair, um, I really don't have any questions, but just little information is that uh, my office, my staff has reached out to the companies, and unfortunately, they're not available on a short notice to come out. Okay, so there, there'll be nobody coming. And um, I do have an amendment to, to, to address the issues that uh, we're discussing, where the money's coming from, to cover the shortfall. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. Pointers, Bankery, Madam Chair. Sure. If the Madam Chair Secretary. could kindly just name the companies that were called and, and declined. Okay, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Senator St. Augustine, I'll give you one minute so that you can get that list together and, and call these out. In the meantime, I know that we've only received one report from IP&E, while others have not submitted. And for the body, in FY20, in, in the 36th Guam Legislature, there was zero reports that was provided. In the 37th Guam Legislature, there was only one company, one company, IP&E, that provided this documentation, and it only came in on February, March, April, May, June, then did not provide anything in August, September, October. So we're still waiting for November. Uh, Senator Snogestine, you're recognized. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, it was um, SB SBPC, IP&E, and Mobile. And they it, won't be able to, it, it, it was all in reference to the short notice. Okay. Um, Mr. Chair, if I may ask, would, did you ask them if they do have those reports available that they're, that's required by law? We didn't inquire for the information we needed, and we didn't, we didn't okay. get any yes, we have it, or what. Okay. We Just, wanted to bring them down because then we could get the answers right. up front. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and Thank I think uh, we're going to take a short recess to make one more call to these companies to ask them if they have the reports available. I understand they cannot be here right now, and it's short notice, but there should be no excuse on a short notice of, of reports that were supposed to be given a year ago. So okay. we're going to take a short recess.
committee whole is called back to order. My colleagues, just to advise you, nobody's answering on mobile. IPNE has been giving the reports. SBPC, their response to my staff is that, number one, the higher ups are not available to identify the report so we can get a report if there's a report. But we need to remind ourselves that all the reports that deals in taxes goes to the revenue and tax. Unfortunately, the cur or the the appointed acting director is off island, and we're trying to figure out how to get all of uh, the other acting now. So with that... Point, point of information, Mr. Chair, if yes. I may, please. The law also says that it does not just go to revenue tax, but it goes to the speaker. Okay. But then we just haven't got, we haven't been receiving it other than IPE. But moving along, we're, my colleagues, we are now going to go into the second round. Do we need a second round? Okay. I hear a lot of yes. Okay. Be reminded, we're talking about Bill 1. We're not talking about any other bill. Only one, and it deals in the fuel. Okay, so let's stick to that. I'll begin with, I'll start from the back. I'll start from, uh, or from the middle. Senator Paris. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Uh, this question for OFB. So in the previous round, I asked questions about uh, revenue projections. And so can you verify, uh, I know you were stating that you feel confident that the revenues are going to um, continue on its trajectory of excess revenues. And um, can you explain how you arrived at that? And what do you see happening as far as uh, collections? Which part is exceeding collections uh, from your perspective? Yes, Senator, as I stated earlier, based on the current revenue collection trend for the first two months of FY24, which amounts about $28 million, if this trend continues for the next six months, eight months, or the whole fiscal year, I am confident that that revenue level as collected will be sufficient to cover the intent of Bill 1 which is in the amount of $7 million. The areas of collection in, in the CER report shows that for, I believe, individual income tax, we're about, I think, $3 million above. If you look at corporate tax, I think we're about 100000 above projection. And if you look at withholding, I believe withholding is about 3 or $6 million above projection. You also go down to the... BBT, I believe the BBT is showing something like 13 million above current revenue projections. So if you add the total of that, it should sum roughly about $28 million, because that is the bulk of where the excess revenues is being collected to date. Okay. Sorry, can you just repeat the list that you just put? Uh, so withholding 6 million, BBT 13, what were the other ones? The time is running. Oh, thanks. Individual income tax is roughly uh, three million. Yeah, three million. Corporate tax is coming in at roughly about one hundred and sixty-eight thousand, and withholding is coming in about ten point two million. If you go down to BBT, I believe the, the amount is around 13 million. So the sum of the two, or the sum of the four uh, amounts, comes out to about 28 million dollars. Okay, and if you go backwards in time, so the previous two months, does it show that similar um, consistency, like pr the prior two months? It's very similar, sim uh, Senator, simply because the amount collected for both months is almost the same. One is 13 million for the month of October, and the other one is 15 million for the month of November. How about going further back? You know, can we, every two months prior to that, is it pretty consistent? Well, looking at the total collected for FY23, Senator, roughly about 105 million. If you divide 105 million by 12, you're going to see basically the amount is almost consistent every month throughout the fiscal year. 
And are the numbers for the, 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 the different things that you itemize, is it pretty consistent as well? I, you know, I'm sorry? In, income tax, corporate tax, withholding, BBT, is that the ones that are providing that excess? Those three, including the BBT. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, again, we're not going to talk about other bills. I know the chair has a, a bill coming up for hearing. Um, but yeah, I appreciate that. I, I don't think I have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Burst. Senator Brown, do you have anything or are you pretty much done from the first round? <laughs> We're still talking about money. You know, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if I'm more enlightened or more confused. I mean, it's disappointing that the fuel companies have not been providing regular reports on top of not responding. Um, you know, that's really disappointing. Uh, I, I don't know that I'm any more enlightened. I mean, of course, we, we don't want to adversely impact our consumers out there, especially at this time of the year. But at the same time, I think, you know, our confidence in the, the financial reporting of the government is, is questionable. And I've been at this game a long time. This is the most concerned I am about information and misinformation being provided to this legislature. And not just us. I mean, we're, you know, we're here on behalf of the public to represent their interests. I'm just very concerned about the misinformation that's being provided to the public with regards to their, to their government, to their finances, and to the money that, that we should have a clear accounting on. I mean, this is not, you know, we're not, we're not sitting here brewing up, should not be sitting here brewing up, you know, financial numbers. But I, I'm just immensely discouraged. Uh, you know, we're being told we're getting all this revenue coming in and no problem, we can cover all these additional expenses and everything's good. And yet, Mr. Chair, I sit in these hearings and I keep hearing critical operations of this government that are not funded and don't have the resources that they need on behalf of our people to operate. So uh, at this point, I don't, I don't know what more to say. I better not say anything more because I, I don't think I have anything good further to add uh, to the discussion this afternoon. So with that, I have no further comment. Thank you. Thank you. Senator Lohan, do you have anything you'd like to... Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, yes, um, I got a few comments, actually. You know, likewise, I, as well, I mean, I'm disappointed um, that reports haven't been, been given and that, um, again, representatives from the oil companies are unable to, to come in here. And likewise, we're trying to make a decision for our people, again, in regards to the, the uh, price, of, price of gas. And so if this doesn't pass, it gives the oil company an opportunity again to tell, to tell the people of Guam, hey, look, because the legislature didn't pass this, so we're going to raise it, you know, 50, 60, 70 cents. It's their fault. It's their fault. And so without them coming in here and telling us and, and us asking the questions why these reports have not been submitted, they have an opportunity to blame it on the legislature. We have a lot of questions to ask. We have a lot of questions to ask these oil companies. You know, I mean, this is the only, I think, one of the only uh, few jurisdictions that I, I see in regards to gas prices. I mean, you, uh, Mr. Chairman, you know this. You go, you, you go back to the United States, you drive, and you, you, you see competitive prices across the street for these gas companies. Only here that we see that oh, maybe, one, maybe one day, maybe not even a whole day, and the price, the, the, gas of, the price of gas is exactly the same. Exactly the same. Well, I guess it, ca it came from the same boat. But that's, that's what I'm talking about. I, again, so we're here, we're, we're, we're trying to make decisions for the people of Guam to lower the, the prices, keep the prices low. Eventually, it's going to go back. And when it does go back, again, they're going to bring the legislature and when we ask them to come in next time again, they're not going to come in. They won't come in. They won't explain why these prices, why their prices mirror each other exactly. They won't do that. You know, likewise, when, when oil prices rise today, you know, something that they've already paid for, that's, that's been, in, that's been in, in, in their reservoir already, that price of gas that we paid for already is going to go up. We're talking about this new, these, these new gas that's going to come here. They're talking about that. They're not talking about what's we pay, what we paid for already. So 
So I, so I can't understand, and, and I, can, I can perfectly understand why they won't come in here and, and tell us. It's perfectly understandable. It's perfectly understandable as well for us to make a decision. And again, if this doesn't go, uh, it gives them an opportunity to say, hey, let's raise it, let's raise it, because your legislature did this. But I can guarantee you that, 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 that whether we pass this or not, okay, gas price is going to go up anyway. They might go down. But then they'll say, well, because they passed it, we, we were able to keep it this much. That's what they're able to say. So we're in this, we're in this dilemma is, is that you know, almost giving us no choice but to pass it for our, for our, for our people, to, to give them some relief. Without any explanations, without any explanations at all. And again, this is a perfect example of a travesty, Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, a travesty. The right time to say leche again. Leche, cheche. So, yeah, I mean, what else can one say? We'll keep going around and we'll be saying the same things. And without the folks here to answer some of our questions, some of our concerns, we're going to have the same concerns, you know? Kind of reminds me of the last time, I don't know how many rounds of no we, we needed to hear. And then in the end, it was a yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 yes. Really? Seguro na no? Seguro hu? Pes, is again to the Yes, some reason. Malum is a Ay, a day. Anyway, oh, hey, stuff. Anyway, thank Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. I got two seconds. There we go. Time is up. Thank you, Susan Masse. Thank you, Senator Luan. Senator Blas, do you have any questions for the panel to continue the discussion on Bill yeah, 1? You know, I, I have to share this, the, the, the frustration of, of uh, you know, my last two colleagues in that, you know, what is, what, what is this figure that we are looking for, okay? Um, you know, right now, Mr. Baza, according to you know, the rules of our engagement basically says I can't, I can't discuss this one yet. However, in our discussion, you said that $7.8 million is something that, right? Yes, sir. Okay, so well, let's, let's go with that figure, okay? You know, absent reports, to be able to see exactly how much was collected and how much was, you know, how much was, sold, how much was collected, here's the concern I have. We're going to eventually appropriate or waive $7.8 million. What happens if then, based on the figures that they're going to finally provide to us, should they provide to us, the, it's short. You know? Yeah, you know. We can only appropriate so much based on, 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 on the information that we got. But, you know, one is, what if it's short? Because what the intention is to, is to put the moratorium into the end of the fiscal year. Lohafaz, again, it runs out in me. Or what happens if, you know, the, the, the gas companies only sold so much that they didn't have to use all $7.8 million? Then what? And so that's where, don't get me wrong, I... I Anytime we can give the money back to our people uh, in, in ways that it can help them. Money that we got from them. Okay? 
I'm a conservative. Let's do that. If we feel that we as a government can make up for it in other areas to cover what is now going to be a $7.8 million shortfall in the budget, but is going to be because I think, Mr. Chair, one of the things I'm looking at is Amendment 2. Don't we have to amend our budget to be able to recognize this properly? But then more so, what happens if this does not meet, is it not enough to, meet the, to, get, to get us to that timeline? And when will we know that? When will we know that $7.8 million that we could have been realized, we've already met that threshold without any reports? That's the dilemma that I'm in right now. Okay? Is, is this enough? Or is this too much? And I'll wait to hear the rest because, you know, I appreciate, you know, between, I mean, with, with what you, Mr. Chair, you have in as far as the panel. They can't come up with the information that I need to be able to make my, make, make, make my decision. And it's not for lack of what they do or don't do. It's for the lack of information that is necessary for us to be able to do this. Because, as my colleague from Tumuning has said, Zanginti Nangesti, pues the blame is going to be on us. Zangin, this is too much, the blame is going to be on us again. So, let me just go ahead and keep talking until my 11 seconds are up. But I hope you, Mr. Chair, you can understand. It's, it's difficult to, be, to, to come to a decision on this, a practical and a fiscal d decision with the lack of the information necessary to do this. Thank you, vote. Thank you, Senator Blas. Senator Duenas, do you have any? No. Senator Parkinson, none. Senator Barnett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Aye, what happened, Big Oil? They don't have gas to come down here and answer our questions? Aye, a day. Aye, a day. Yeah, I do feel like we're in, a, in between a rock and a hard place because we're flying blind with the reports, but our people need this relief. And I feel like if we don't pass this thing today, then come stroke of midnight, Big oil's going to conspire and collude and raise the price of gas, like uh, my colleague said, 60, 70 cents, but I think they might raise it a dollar or two. So, Mr. Steve, just for the people viewing or whoever wants to answer it, because I was taking notes here, so we're $28 million above projected revenues, minus 15 for the power credit. You're correct, Senator. Okay. And then that leaves 13 million. And You're this is going to cost 7.8 million. Yes. OK. Can you explain the, the highway fund? So this 7.8 million that would normally go into the highway fund, what is that money used for? The highway fund center is used to fund certain agencies, uh, in particular public works, uh, Guam Police Highway Fund, uh, the Guam Mass Transit and I believe DOA used this portion of the highway fund to pay for the uh, highway, uh, the audit report that we do every year. So Mr. Uh, Guerrero, does any of this uh, money that goes to DPW uh, in the highway fund, is that money used to uh, conduct repairs on the roads? Yes, Senator, it does. Okay, so that's the striping, the reflectors, all the things that our people are complaining about because we've had just about 30 people die on, on these roads. So that's where that money would normally go. That's correct. Okay, but you're saying, and then Mr. Baza is also agreeing that we're gonna be all right if we pass this. 
Yes, sir. Yeah. So you're saying it's okay to Christmas our people this today. So we Christmas this th them this today, and they're not going to get Chattaguara for Easter. We're going to be all right. If I may, Senator, I would let me go back and just qualify when I keep saying yes, I, I support it. If we do bill one as, as proposed, there will be an impact on the highway fund because the, what that's saying is that we're not going to be collecting 7.9 million of what we anticipate to collect for the remaining fiscal year. I'm also saying that because the general fund is in excess of, of its collection, right now to the tune of 28 million, specifically more 13 million when we account for all the other things we need to do, and given the rate that we are collecting these excess revenues, and that we have nine more months, well actually 10 more months to go before the end of the fiscal year, I feel confident based on this collection rate that we will have sufficient funds to cover this nine point, I mean 7.9 million appropriation. Now, in the end, somewhere down the, in the, in, during the middle of the fiscal year, we might have to appropriate two public works to cover for the shortfall, not realizing the collection of the highway fund because of this bill. That's what I'm saying. But as of right now, I'm confident there is sufficient funds in the general fund by the end of the fiscal year to cover this appropriation. Mr. Baza, do you care to echo, expand on that? I echo the same sentiments. Okay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Nothing further, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Madam Speaker, do you have any questions for the panel? And I know you wanted others to be here, but unfortunately they're not here. Ma'am, do you have anything for... Yes, Mr. Chair. I want a DOA as we normally have during our round um, committee of the whole and any fiscal matters. And that's because although BBMR can tell us what they're tracking in the CRER report, they can confirm that, the amount that we're estimating for this bill. The choices that we have to make as senators is what are we going to use this on, right? Are we going to use it on reducing liquid fuels tax or removing liquid fuels tax? Are we going to use it on energy credit? As BBMR is telling us, we cannot do another energy credit round if we do this, according to their tracking. Or are we going to use it on something that BBMR also told us that they might have had to deappropriate in order to fund the $30 million for vendors for GMH due to their failure to bill. And so I, w I really want those choices to be clear. And that's why I have asked about the typhoon expenditures, because when we discussed typhoon expenditures with DOA the last time they were here, and I want them here to confirm, because the, the latest typhoon report that we just received today, after I asked the questions earlier, we received a report. That report shows significant changes versus what we discussed just last month. It tells us now, sorry, I gotta find that, here it is. So now the Typhoon Report is telling us um, where they had last month allocated 45 million for typhoon recovery and repair expenditures, they are now only ad allocating 41.5 million, less. I'm not sure how we go down from allocating because they told us exactly where that 41 or 45 million came from. They gave us the list. That money came from 20 million GDOE, 3 million for food that they refused to implement took it away from that appropriation and put it towards typhoon expenditure. 4.9 million from FEMA COVID reimbursement. And then they told us about the 16 million reimbursement from Medicaid that we did not know about and that they were expecting $17 million more. So I very much would like to know if we've got that $17 million more and, and why, because that, that's relevant to me. Uh, I had asked him earlier, he doesn't know. You have the answer now? Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was able to get clarification on it. Uh, DOA said they have not received that 17 yet. Okay. 
So they received 16 million. They told us they were re expecting actually 18 million more any day now. That's what they said back then. So now we're saying they haven't received it. Well, that's interesting because in addition to reducing the money that was allocated to typhoon recovery from 46 million to 41 million or 42 million, they also are reporting a huge reduction in encumbrances. So last month's report, they had spent only less than 20 million, meaning they had a balance of 30 million set aside in funds for um, that was pretty much available if we're not going to do any more typhoon recovery. I'm not sure what's going on there. But today we have even more money supposedly set aside, allocated, but not expended, not encumbered, $34 million. So if I know that there's $34 million, <clears throat> it's I feel very confident that we should, with confidence, direct that the excess revenues that we're receiving go towards relieving liquid fuels tax. As I said, Mr. Chair, I put in a bill originally, the original bill regarding liquid fuels tax was to repeal the liquid fuels tax for consumers of regular gasoline. And I still believe that we can do that. and we can still fund the payment of roads. So do you know why the typhoon encumbrances are less now? By They went from $8.7 million in encumbrances to $120,000. Yeah, I think they had to redo the purchase orders for those. So it was de-encumbered and then they're working on re-encumbering larger amounts. All right. Do you have any estimate what the balance? Well, the balance today is $33 million. I think that's so sad, Mr. Chair, when we took $20 million away from GDOE. GDOE is now reporting that they're short on the amount that they need to pay for uh, even using ARPA funds to cover repair. And they're critically short. GMH is critically short. And and it looks like I'm not, I can't tell from this that anyone's getting typhoon repairs because it's going down instead of up. I do know that 14.3 um, was the last estimate I had, uh, was made aware of for DOE. That, that is being allocated for DOE? It's, it's in the account. It's just needing to be re-encumbered for their mold mitigation and I think fence repairs. So 14 million? Yes. Of the 20 million, yes. it's going to be spent on GDOE? Uh, that's what's in the works that I know of right now. Okay, I hope that's correct because we've been receiving all kinds of reports regarding GDOE that were, it seems to change every, every time we ask, Mr. Chair. I see my time is up. Thank that you, is Madam. unfortunate. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Senator, Senator Nicholas, do you have any questions? And we'll be on the last row. Uh, more like comments, you know, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, the last time I spoke I got a little brain fog but I wanted to say something smart this time <laughs> so you know the national average you know you could actually see the gas prices in base and they kind of like reflect the national average uh, I think I went in there and, uh, somebody who was gassing with me was shocked because it was like three three dollars and thirty cents and in 2008 the barrel of oil uh, it's probably like at the height of the uh, our confrontations in Iraq and Afghanistan. The barrel of oil came up to about $127 per barrel. But today, the barrel of oil is hovering around $65 a barrel. And so I follow these trends. I follow the market prices on gold and, and oil. And today's market price on uh, crude oil is about $69.68. And uh, it doesn't seem like the prices of gas outside the military bases have come down incrementally with the, uh, with the uh, prices of the market price of oil. So... <laughs> 
but in base it has, you know. And uh, I don't know, are we buying the gas companies here, uh, buying gas at a much higher rate than everywhere else in the nation uh, that keeps our prices of oil or gas here high? The, uh, the other thing is, <clears throat> I understand how remote we are and how difficult it is sometimes to conduct business but I don't think it warrants this high of gas prices and and so it's so easy to blame the legislature <laughs> if uh, we don't give a couple of cents here and a couple of cents there but really what the gas prices should reflect is the national average and if if my calculations are correct market forces should dictate that outside gases, gas prices should be hovering around three, three to four dollars maybe, but that's not the reality we're facing today. So is this a better, is this a, although I, I support this measure because uh, sometimes corporations don't really do things for the benefit of the society or community, but if this is one way to get them to lower the gas prices somehow, then uh, I think we should try every, every chance we can to do that for our people. Because I do understand market forces and why prices can be high here. But if, uh, if there's some way we can offer some relief to our, to our citizenry and this is that, then I think, uh, I think we, could, we should do it. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Chairman, uh, okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator Snickers. I, I think you need to be aware about the Jones Act, why we pay a lot more in Guam. In the mainland, if you try to follow that, Senator Snickers, you can get gas cheaper from state to state because they just travel by trucks. You, you're familiar with that. Yes, sir. But, but I understand where you come from. I love to see gas go down. Maybe right. try to convince somebody to bring gas cheaper. Right, but that's, that's exactly what I was right. talking about. I still have one uh, minute and okay. 31 seconds. Go ahead. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, that's why I say, you know, because of our remote location, you know, things can, things can be a little bit more expensive. I wanted to run my time like everybody else and just keep talking. Uh, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. Uh, Merry Christmas, everybody. <laughs>
We should be giving excess revenue to DPW to fix these roads because I can tell you one thing. The savings you get at a gas pump is nothing compared to having to fix the axle on your, your, your car because your tire hit a pothole. Or the wear and tear you get on roads that are so badly, badly paved or not even paved at all. Tires are not cheap, my friends. One tire would cost you what? The savings of this two years of this liquid fuel tax waiver that you would receive at the pump. I've been asking this body to at least look at these reports from these companies, these Oreo companies. I brought this up at the very beginning of this session because none of us was paying attention if those reports were being brought in. None of us. I'm to blame too. But when this bill came up to extend it, you better bet I went to look for those reports and to seeing if the people received this, this, this assistance. I can't support this bill without those reports. I'm gonna sleep good at night knowing that I'm gonna be fiscally responsible and not just hand out money to anything just because the governor sends down a bill and you guys go, oh yeah, okay, yes. We'll vote for it because she brought it down to us. And hurry up, fun, because you know we wanna go out and go Christmas shopping. Shame on us. Extra excess revenue? You can go out to our community right now and they'll tell you what do they need that excess revenue for. Many of them were saying that the, the credit they were getting for their power bill, they really see the savings. They can see the savings. It's been helping them. Now we have an opportunity to fund more money to DBW to fix our roads. But what do we do? No, we, we just keep it status quo. We just use that excess money just to keep them status quo. When they need over a hundred million dollars to fix our roads, that was like, how many, five years ago that number was out there, a hundred million to help fix our roads. And what do we give them? 21 million. And what did uh, Steve, tell us from OFB that only 1.5 was giving them to, to maintain the roads? 1.5? Ambilai. Um, you know, doggone well, that is not even close. That's from, oh, my time is up? I think I've made my point. Thank you, Madam Vice. Mr. Chair. My colleagues, yes. I'd yes, like to Madam move. Sir. For one more round, for anyone who wants questions, please. No, we, we, we're, that rules and game was just two rounds. Notwithstanding the rules, and we, and we got I'd, comments. I'd like to make a motion, yeah. Okay, there's a motion to add another round. Is, just to clarify, Is anybody in favor of adding one. another round? All in favor, please raise your hand if you want another round. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Short. Thank you. We will now move to the third round with the amendments. Apologize, Madam Speaker. And I will move and we'll release the panel and we'll be on recess and then we go. There's only one amendment right now. All right? And then we'll move from there. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baza, Mr. Guerrero, and Ms. Llewellyn. Thank you very much. We're on recess at this time.
We're back from recess. Thank you for um, your patience. I'm going to recognize our chairman, Senator Joseph Augustine, um, on his amendment, uh, which is should be on the drive, am I not mistaken? It's on the drive, but you also have a hard copy on your desk. So, Senator Snogestein, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my colleagues, my amendment is to add a new Section 2 of the bill to read uh, Section 2 appropriation, the amount of seven million eight hundred and twenty-three seven hundred and thirty-five dollars is hereby appropriate to the Guam Highway Fund for the, from the general fund. And then they renumber the uh, the other sections, section two, section three is not two is now three, enactment and the severability. Uh, my colleagues, it was already mentioned earlier, that, and most of us, us are all in agreement. If we can give back the money to the people, then so be it. That's another way of returning, giving back the money. And I know that many of us are are questioning the reports that will deal with in due time, and then we just go after the companies and ask them. But it's just ironic how we say, waive the tax, but you need to tell me what I waived. The last time I checked and I traveled from Jigu all the way down here, I don't, I haven't seen the price of gas go up. And if it has, it's gone up a little bit and then went back down. And as long as the price of gas stays where it's at and doesn't move, God bless us, and then we'll deal with the companies here in Guam that don't want to give us a report and go after them for not reporting and maybe figure out a way how to penalize them for that. With that, I ask my colleagues to support me on this, support the amendment of providing $7,823,735 from the general fund to the Guam Highway Fund for the short the waiver. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Sonogastine. Would anybody like to speak on the Sonogastine Amendment Line 6, page 1? Sen Minority Leader, Senator Frank Blas, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, if the uh, author of the amendment can yield to a question, and the question being, where from the general fund are we getting $7,823,735? Senator Snoggy, would you like to uh, respond to that? Yes. You know, it, it's been identified during the first two rounds is that there's approximately 28 million surplus. Out of the 28, 15 has already been put aside for the power rebate. There's currently 13 million. And that's where we're gonna draw that money from. And, and we need to remind ourselves that this is for the whole year. So it's not seven million up front. It's seven million for the rest of the year. So you divide seven into seven or nine, it gives you about a million, close to a million a month. Minority leader, does that answer your question? No, ma'am. <laughs> well, if that's, if that's the answer, ma'am, um, uh, I think that we're skipping a whole part here in that if the intent is to do that and use the excess fund, then I think it's only appropriate that this body then increase what we anticipate will be the general fund. It would have to be increased in section one of the budget bill. To be able, so that we can show that the that we anticipated at least a 7.8 million dollar increase, because as this the way this is written, ma'am, is that this is going to be taken from the budget from the general fund budget that we had already appropriated and approved. We didn't appropriate and approve 28 million dollars, so that. 7.8 has to be put into the uh, what we anticipate the revenue increase in the revenues will be in the appropriate categories, appropriate authorities before we can before we can appropriate it. Because as it stands right now, we do this, somebody's going to be short 7.8 million dollars because the the 7.8 million dollars that we that that I. I see that we only want to be able to use here. It's not been approved by this body yet. We have to recognize that. So that's the concern I have. I understand the appropriation, but I think there's a step that's missing here in being able to identify and to recognize that that $7.8 million X in increase 
in the general fund budget, in the general fund. Because excess is not, we start to, we go down that slippery slope, that just opens up a whole Pandora's box and the whole, we, we can just go ahead and appropriate whatever we want to appropriate. So, that's my concern, Madam Chair. Thank you. You're welcome, Minority Leader Senator Blas. Is there anyone else who would like to speak on the minute? Senator Joanne Brown, you're recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. I mean, I appreciate the efforts of our, our good other chairman in wanting to provide the funding to DPW because, again, as I mentioned earlier, I think we all realize there's, there's a tremendous need for maintenance and repairs of our existing roadways and areas certainly where we need to address new pavement. But, you know, it comes down to me to financial responsibility, fiscal responsibility, and I don't know if the solution is, oh, we'll just raise the revenue. You know, every budget year we come in here and we go through this whole exercise of, of coming to some degree of consensus on what we believe, believe the, the revenue forecast is going to be. Um, and I, I don't, you know, I, I appreciate the comments too of a good senator, the previous, uh, our minority leader from Barragata saying, well, you know, we should raise the revenue. I don't know that that's the solution. Is that seven million there? I'm even in more confusion with regards to where we are financially because we have all this bragging of all this excess revenue that we have. But keep in mind, colleagues, many of you have spent quite some time appropriating. Every time you think there's an extra penny somewhere, I mean, it got appropriated before it landed in the bank. So this to me, I don't know, this is not tangible to me. And maybe if this was my first round, then hey, maybe I just don't know what the heck I'm talking about. But I've probably been through quite a number of budgets than most of you, probably than anybody at the moment, uh, since Senator Teen is not here, than any of you. And I've just never seen this. I mean, we are going to be appropriating in the dark. Why don't we just put 50 million, 100 million? It, it doesn't matter what we put here at this point because I don't really know what's real. I have no confidence after the last session in BBMR. And the position that Mr. Carlson took in telling us, oh no, the money's not there, there is no money. I mean, how many times did we ask him the question? I asked him directly. No, there is no money, there is no money. And then what does the governor do? She signs the bill and hey, I, I, we're all hyping, I'll tell you. I just paid my power bill recently. That's the lowest power bill I've paid in my entire adult life. So that's kind of a nice thing that gives me resources to take care of other things for my family. But I don't know how we proceed doing this type of thing. You know, we're, we're all positioning for the media outreach of what's gonna to be told to the public that we did or did not support reducing taxes on gas. But I don't even know what the financial picture is. What are we taking away? What are we not providing? Because as I mentioned earlier, I sit through these budget hearings and all I hear in these critical areas are where we are not providing support to our people out there. And while we're saying we got all this excess money, I don't know about you, but just look at yourself. You tell me here and now, what is better? Our educational system? Our public safety? Do you feel any safer out there, people? Your overall quality of life, is it any better out there? So at this point, to just appropriate and raise revenue, I don't believe is the responsible thing to do because to me, I, I'm operating in the dark. I don't know about the rest of you. I mean, the lights are on, but fiscally, I, I just feel, I'm very much of the position we're operating in the dark. And we can, you know, we can position ourselves. We can lie our way through this. And just say, no problem, you know, let's approve it. But I really don't know who to trust anymore with regards to information. Do we trust our finance budget office here? I mean, obviously now I, I've got no confidence in the director of BBMR. Because I don't, I, all I can say is the outcome didn't show that he was being truthful if that was the case. That either that or there is a major disconnect in the administration. Major disconnect. Last time I checked, BBMR is still in the same building with the governor. 
So I, I just have reservations. I, I support the intent of definitely because DPW needs the funding, but you know, is this, is this a phantom appropriation or is it real? And I don't even have an answer to that. I have no confidence under which to make a decision uh, with regards to this amendment. So appreciate the opportunity, Madam Chair, to comment. You're very welcome, Senator Brown. Yeah, it was disappointing we couldn't get DOA in here too as well to confirm. So uh, you recognize Senator uh, Duenas. So at this time, Madam Chair, I'd like to see if I can get the Appropriations Chair to yield to a question. Senator Snogasin? Okay. Go ahead, question. your question. So my question, Madam Chair, is um, the way I read the amendment is, is to recognize the excess revenue and replenish the revenue to Department of Public Works, uh, Guam Highway Fund, in order to assure that the money is appropriated, meaning that it can't be used for any other purpose. And the identification of the general fund here is exactly what we did when we just passed the $100 power credit. So I, I got to look for some consistency in this body because uh, we either trust the general fund or we don't trust the general fund. That's, that's really the brass tax that it comes down to. So Mr. Chairman, uh, or Madam Chair, I, I asked the author of the amendment to yield to that question. Senator Sinagasin, do you yield? Yes. I just want to make it very specific, and I want to bring back my colleagues that were on the 36th Guam legislature. When we initially passed this liquid fuel tax waiver, it was unanimous. Other than the, other than the, uh, uh, the, the senators today that are present, everybody voted for it in the same manner we're doing and adding this on. And exactly as, as my colleague asked, we need to trust the accounts that are reported. We do that every time we appropriate. We go back to that account. And with that, I hope I answered that. And if not, please restate the question and I'll, and I'll answer it differently. I believe, you, that I believe the Chairman of Finance and Budget has answered the question. And I believe that the identification of this funding source to be replaced to the highway fund is to ensure that the money's still there in order to do the repairs that are being asked for. This is a tax, Madam Chair, and exactly what the Chairman just said. From the beginning of the good bill that our Speaker introduced was for the purpose of putting a moratorium on the tax. If we don't do this, the fuel companies have to collect the tax. Otherwise, they're going to eat it. If they collect that tax and they're doing their proper job, they remit that tax to revenue and taxation and the funding sources identified. If they do not collect the tax, then by golly, Miss Molly, let's make sure that they have not taken that money and, and kept it. We'll see when the reports come in. But aside from that, if they don't collect, they don't remit. But we can pay ourselves now or we can pay ourselves later because if we're being true to ourselves that we still want to continue to have this funding source available for the highway fund, then we have to appropriate it. Otherwise, the money's going to be floating. We are identifying excess revenue. BBMR and OFB sat in front of us and told us the revenue is here. Now, this will also be done on a monthly basis. So if for some crazy reason the revenue starts to go south, then we got to come back in here and say the money's not available. But aside from that, we're going to get a monthly CRER, approximately $900,000 per month will be taken out in order to be able to fund this program. This entire appropriation will be marked as revenue for the funding source going into the highway fund. And that's the long and the short of it. This is, this, like I said, I have to look for some consistency here because we either are going to trust the general fund or we're not going to trust the general fund. We can't have it for a power credit, but then say it's not good enough for a gas credit. I, I, I hope that will not be a mark 
of this 37th Guam legislature that we pick and choose whenever we're going to have the general fund identified as a funding source for whatever we're going to do in this body. Otherwise, we're just picking and choosing what day we like a program and what day we don't like a program. Now, as far as I'm concerned, if there are, if there are agencies that are not realizing their revenue and they are not doing their job because they don't have revenue, that's a whole different ballgame. Then we have the OFB, our, our, our chair of OFB, call an immediate session, bring everybody down here and say, what the heck is going on? Because you continue to send us these CRERs that say we have excess revenue, that you have all of your appropriation intact, that you have not been assessed any type of reserve, and you can spend your money. So if you're not spending your money, you must be doing something wrong. So for that reason, I support the amendment to recognize the revenue going back to where it's supposed to be so that it's not floating out there and it's appropriated for the purpose. And like I asked OFB director, this appropriation is excess revenue, which means our budget's still intact. The revenue that we passed is still intact because we are appropriating excess revenue. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Senator Duenas. Senator Talotaita, we are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. The amendment calls for 7 million, 7.8 million plus. Let me give you some numbers that are real. Last month, our Healthy Futures Fund was short $1.1 million. Our Guam Highway Fund was short $354,404. Now we just, for this month, we just see, received the CRER report. Our Healthy Futures Fund is now $3.5 million short. Our Highway Fund is now short $806,000. We're seeing a trend, all right. Our special funds are, short, are becoming shorter and shorter in what we appropriated. At the end of the fiscal year FY23, my colleagues, at the end of fiscal year FY23, the Healthy Futures Fund was short $12.3 million. The highway fund at 836000 And I'm not even going through the other special funds that were short. Here we are two months into the new fiscal year and we're spending money like it's going to continue to grow on trees. That's not being responsible. And once again, is this seven million really going to help our people? Only data that you receive is a CRER report stating that there's 13 million, and guess what? It's 28 million that was in excess. And, but because this body keeps spending money and spending money, they had to bleed over into the FY24 excess revenue because 23 couldn't cover it. Because we over expended any excess revenue. Now here we are with the same type of practices when there's so much more that we need to address. Our schools still need to be addressed. Again, our roads need to be addressed. This funding is not a true reality. At the end of the year, an audit brings in a true reality. But unfortunately, the last audit we have is... <laughs> I scratch that because it's totally not a true reality on the last audit that came out with 19 million, but really they didn't calculate everything that was appropriated. So think about that. Why don't we just wait until we get these reports from the gas companies to show that it really is giving us savings, that this 7.8 million is really going to the consumers of gas on this island and not in the pockets of these big oil companies. 
but none of you guys can attest to it. Nobody. But yet you're so willing to support this bill. Cross your fingers, your toes, and whatever else you need, your legs to hopefully that there is money there. Is that what we're doing, voting on hope? Or the reality, because we have a responsibility to the people of Guam. They're hard earn taxes that they pay. And I'll tell you one thing. We have such a huge exodus come in this island. Our population has gone down. That means our tax base has gone down as well. Think about that. And here we are, we're so anxious to spend this money right now on the second month of the first physical year. Please, colleagues, think about this. Thank you, Madam Spe Chair. Thank you very much, sir. Tidegree. Does anyone else have any, any uh, comments they would like to make on the amendment by Senator St. Augustine? Madam Speaker, you're recognized. I guess if I could ask the sponsor of the amendment to yield, just to help us all understand, if we didn't pass this amendment, what would happen to the healthy, I mean, to the um, highway fund? If, I, I yield to the question, Madam Chair. All right, Mr. If Chair. If we don't pass it, but we pass the bill, or are we not gonna, are we, are you anticipating yes. we're going to pass the bill, but not the amendment? Yes, if that happened. Then they'll be short 7.8. Highway fund will be short 7.8 off the bat because they won't be able to get the funding because we waived the liquid fuel tax. All right. Thank you. Uh, it's just another one of those things, and I totally agree with the frustration that my colleagues are expressing regarding the way things are being described to us by the administration's representatives, they just came down here and told us there would be no effect, there would be no harm to anyone if we pass the governor's bill. And uh, we can see from what, if the Committee on Appropriations Chair is correct, that absolutely there is an effect. It just depends on, it really, it's strange. When it was my bill, there was a huge effect. It would deappropriate from everybody, the mayors, GPD, everyone. They made a big deal about it. DPW, when it was another colleague's bill, they said, this is fine, we're going to do it. Today, they said, the governor's bill, no problem. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it, we can do it. And now we're learning that no, we can't do it without a cost to the highway fund. And, um, but we've got a, a means to replace that. So I'm just wondering, all of, it's a, it really is, it's a, it's a, we're trying to make policy based on facts. It's very difficult to get the facts because they are stated different ways by different people and a different hour and a different session. We were just here last month being told exactly like my colleague said, exactly we were told over and over, is there any money for the GPA energy credit? Can we give relief to those consumers? No, we cannot. BBMR, DOA, OFB, no, no, no. They all said no. In the same time, they're telling us they're sitting on $30 million for typhoon repair that has not been made. They're expecting $17 million in Medicaid any day. And now today they tell us they haven't received that. Then they tell, I mean, it's just like the stories change. And I guess that's what I'm trying to say. That's my point. The stories change. And we are always taking a little bit of a gamble here of who we're going to believe and which facts we can calculate for ourselves. So I know this is a choice. You are right. We are making a choice here of, we have a limited number of excess funds. We're calling it excess, 
But we have a limit because the CRER says it's excess. It's not what we appropriated. But what the CRER didn't tell us was that in order, was that there were several appropriations made in prior years. For example, $1.8 million to DPW specifically for village streets and roads resurfacing. This was just done in, uh, from FY23 budget, in the FY23 budget. All of this plus more have never been put into those agencies because according to BBMR, the question that I got cut off from asking when I wanted to extend the round, I asked him off the record. And so he confirmed that this 1.8 million to the highway fund plus all the other listing of money to GMH, to um, for capital improvement, to detox, for detoxification programs and so many more that these never got to the agencies. And so when we say we have excess, we mean they have chosen not to fund these. They chose not to fund them when the appropriations were made. They're choosing not to, choosing not to fund them now. Ma Madam Speaker, I don't mean so, to, to yes. intervene on your comments, but uh, audio is relayed uh, repeatedly. They need to reset. Oh, sorry. And I, I don't want to have your comments not be included and not be covered. So I apologize for uh, if we can just have, uh, take a brief recess and have audio reset, and then we'll come back to allow you the opportunity to finish your, your comments. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, with that, we're in recess.